hopefully the connection will last. Hello Facebook, hello YouTube. I was just saying to our friends on Instagram here that I have travelled up country today. Those of you who uh, do look at my stories on Instagram may have seen that I had a car journey this morning, so I travelled from Nairobi to Naivasha, which is sort of central-ish Kenya in the uh, Great Rift Valley. And it's beside this enormous lake, and there's a huge amount of farming that goes on here. You may have heard my Friday Five podcast with Amy Collis from the Fair Trade Foundation talking all about the flower farms to here. It's where, if you buy Kenya beans, they're probably grown from here under natural sunlight with local workers providing really, really important sustainable agriculture and trade. And in fact, my lovely girlfriend, who I'm with today, we've just had lunch yeah. actually. Uh, is the founder of an amazing organic farm called Ecoscapes. After this, do go and take a look online if you want to look at her website. And she, as far as I know, is the first who has ever offered organic veg boxes to Kenya. And whenever I'm here with my family, we always get her organic veg boxes delivered. And I've just been filming actually in her farm this morning and we were looking all around at the different things that she's growing. Things like chia seeds, for example, I've learned so much We've taken some great pictures and I'm going to ask Alex to join me for a podcast soon to talk about it and just the problems of sustainable farming and particularly the problems with pesticides and all the stuff that we kind of know more about here in the UK. But there's so much that needs to happen in developing countries when they've become so reliant on pesticides and artificial fertilizers and things. So she is an amazing woman, an amazing eco warrior. I can't wait for you to hear all about that. So the main focus for today is actually going to be talking about eye health and I'm going to be joined by a leading professor from Moorfields, another fab female, Professor Dawn Sims. So hopefully that connection is going to work in just a moment. But before that, as I said, I came here for lunch. So I've just been finishing my lunch and Alice, uh, Alex said just after, you know, would you like some berries for pudding? So I said, oh yeah, that'd be great. You know, thinking it'd be normal berries. And she's given me these extraordinary things. Alex, are you around? Yeah, hi. Hi. You don't, don't worry, you don't have to come on camera unless you want to come and wave and say hi. These little things, they look like raspberries, but they're not raspberries. What are they? Yeah, those are wine berries. Wine berries. Oh, my goodness. They are so delicious. Berries are great, of course, because they are low-sugar fruit and full of anthocyanins, all the things that we need, actually, for good eye health. And then there's these little things. I thought at first sight they were a blueberry, but it's not a blueberry. What is this? little kind of black wrinkly thing it's, it's a local kenyan blackberry it's a kenyan blackberry look at that it looks a little bit like i don't know cross between a blackberry and a blueberry mm. oh my goodness really good i shall put those down and have them with some local cream afterwards justine is saying oh her mum has macular degeneration so this will be very interesting yeah absolutely it's going to be fascinating so let's see whether we can join professor sim who is I think in London. Let's hope the connection works. Where are we? Now, I don't see you on my request to join. So I know we've got Rachel, haven't we, manning Facebook? Rachel, do you just want to give um, Dawn a quick message and just make sure that she's not trying to join? Several of you on, in on Instagram are saying that you've received the new magazine. I am so jealous because I haven't got it. I mean, I've obviously, I've seen the online version and I think those of you who get the digital version can probably download that right now because it usually comes through on the first of the month. Um, but for the printed version, I'm going to have to wait until I get back home in a few weeks' time. So many of you, yeah, look, oh, you're all seeing it. Oh, that's so great to know. Yeah, great recipes. It's a, it's a really, really lovely issue, actually. I mean, I know I say that every time. All the issues are lovely, but this is, is a particularly good one. It's very green, if you notice. So not only the colour palette that we've chosen, but also the things that we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, green juices and shakes and living green and in a more sustainable. Tina on, uh, on Facebook says your new magazine has just arrived. Well done. Well, for those of you that haven't subscribed yet, who want to get it, it's only available on subscription. We came out of retail, must be, oh God, at least 18 months ago now. And uh, so we do do subscription deals. It's free PMP in the UK. We can send it all over the world. But you just pay a bit extra for the postage. Uh, but there is always a really good offer for those who want to subscribe for the first time or if you're giving gift subscriptions. And this is the subscription offer at the moment that's just gone live. So it's Balance Drops from Life Armour. And this, uh, these are great. This is the ashwagandha. 
for oh, just putting us back into balance, helping to keep us calm. I might actually have a few. I didn't have my ashwagandha this morning. So ashwagandha um, with some other adaptogenic herbs. And I keep these in my bag, actually, and just, mm, whenever you feel that you need a little bit of, oh, because life's getting a bit anxious and fraught, to say the least. Um, they are very handy to have. So that's Life Armor. I think they're about £22, £22.50. But they are the free subscription gift at the moment. So if you need an incentive to subscribe to the magazine or to give a gift subscription, then this is a very good one to get. I think you can have ashwagandha with thyroxine. I know that we've talked about that before. Yeah, so ping the message if you want to check that out. Um, Nikki, yeah, dry eyes. I mean, dry eyes is such a common symptom of menopause because, of course, we lose our estrogen receptors from all over the body, and that includes the eyes. Oh, Lemony Crosby says, my magazine was waiting for me when I got back from the dentist. What a nice treat, something to cheer you up. Hopefully you had, uh, you had a successful visit. Right, here we go. Where are we? Here we are, mthk.com, which is the name of Dawn's company that she is a co-founder of talking about eye health and some amazing eye products that can really help us as we age particularly. So lots of questions coming in already. Hello, Professor Hello. Dawn Sim, how are you? I'm very well, so nice to see you. Very nice to see you too. I'm just gonna turn my volume off a bit because our friends on Facebook and YouTube obviously can't see you, but they will be able to hear all your okay. pearls of wisdom. Where are you speaking to us from? Are you in London? I'm in I'm in London. I'm actually at home because uh, my 11-year-old is unwell. I was oh. meant to be in the office, but oh well, she's, she'll be fine. She'll live. Good, good. <laughs> I hope so. I, it's always tricky, isn't it? I had my 11-year-old out here for half term and... Yeah, it's always always that panic, isn't it, when they start to, to dip downhill. Can you turn your volume up anymore? Are you on max? I've turned mine up on max. Just to... Um, Can you hear yeah, me yeah. now? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I just need to put my microphone in properly. Is that, is that better? I'll yeah. speak up. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Thank you very much. So let's start by talking a little bit about your background, because I know you from your work at UCL and also at Moorfields. What what exactly is your background? How did you become to become a professor of ophthalmology? Is that right? Yes, yes, O P H T H. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm from Singapore originally. So I grew up in the tropics. I came to London uh, age eighteen for university, and I've been here twenty seven years. So I think you do the math and. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I kind of fell into it. I, I ruled out everything else. I, I wanted to be a vascular surgeon. I wanted to be in a jungle, you know, putting a, an anesthetic block in and chopping off a leg if I had to, but wow. didn't quite fit in with my um, lifestyle choices <laughs> of not liking um, uh, the lack of plumbing. Yeah, uh, and, I'm with uh, you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Very important, plumbing. And, and, I kind of I fell into eyes because I, I love small things. I love surgery. I love doing things by hands. It's like it's like I think dentists are very similar. Mm. You you create and you mold something, and um, so th that's that's kind of where I am now. And Moorfields, of course, has a global reputation, doesn't it, as a real centre of excellence for eye care. And they, it's, the, it's the, the work there is yeah. remarkable. I mean, it must be extraordinary. You're, you know, you're literally making blind people see again and, and more. It's, uh, and it's so cutting edge that the technology that goes on. I know Professor Stevens, who's at Moorfields, and all his laser work is, is extraordinary. Uh, very pioneering. I think what's great about the place is the diversity of people that are there. Mm. You cannot find a language practically that um, someone doesn't speak there. And so, and we have people coming from all around the world to train there. So I have friends from around the globe, just just for that very reason, to be honest. Mm. And and what kind of special. things do you do you see in your practice? What what are the kind of, you know, what's your daily schedule like in terms of fixing people with eye issues? I see a lot of cataract, um, macular degeneration is a huge thing. Yeah, uh, diabetes big in this country as well. Shockingly so, because you would think more, uh, you know, East Asia, etc. Um, dry eye is a huge problem, yeah. and and just uh, 
mostly people just not understanding what happens to your eyes as you get older, mm. which is something that in my middle age, I've, I've encountered fairly recently, so I can identify. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, same, up. absolutely. Coming back to that question about diabetes, I think people perhaps might not associate diabetes, type 2 diabetes, particularly with eye problems. What happens? Why, why do the eyes deteriorate so badly and why can diabetes cause blindness? Oh, this, this is so important. So diabetes is a huge thing. It runs in my family. Uh, mm. Half of my family are diabetic. I'm just waiting for it to happen to me. Um, but diabetes can be devastating to the eye and it's a silent killer. So by the time you notice something, it's too late. You really? need to see somebody once a year. And the reason for that is high sugar levels in the blood kills the cells that line the blood vessels in the eye. And it's like having a hose, you know, without the inner lining. Everything just leaks out, it, it dies, it bursts, and you just can't grow these blood vessels back. So right. um, it's, it's, it's a huge problem. Uh, I think in the UK we are more advanced than anyone else because mm -hmm. we have a screening program. So you can have a free eye check once a year. If you have and you can pick it up then, can you? Pick up the signs? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just with a, a quick photograph of the back of the eye. Mm. And is that something that an optician could do? Yes, definitely. Okay, um, really but important But it's, it's offered to everybody above age 12 for free, so it's... Um, really? Yeah. Um, and then cataracts. I mean, this is something that we also hear about as we age. What, what exactly is a cataract and, and why do we need replacements? So we all have a lens in the eye. Uh, you think of a lens as you know what you see on a camera, but that's not so. The lens in our eye is kind of a, a ball of gloop. And that gloop, as you get older, uh, and the gloop is clear and focuses for us because mm -hmm. it has proteins in the eyes that are arranged in a parallel fashion. And as you get older, they kind of start to disrupt and becomes right. cloudy and it happens to all of us from age you know 50 60 onwards and you tend to have surgery if you don't live in high uv well you're in a high uv area so i'd be careful i am at the moment uh, if yeah. you <laughs> yeah. but in london you don't have high uv apart from two or three weeks a year um so you tend to get cataracts in the 70s and 80s mm -hmm. but in australia for example you tend to get it in your 50s and 60s so everyone gets it it's one of those things really it's just 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 with age and so you talk about the lens going kind of cloudy milky is that a sign then that if we start to get sort of blurry fuzzy vision would that be a, a, an indication potentially of cataracts yeah. yeah definitely blurry fuzzy um glare so if you drive at night and you find that you're getting glare, that's uh, the first sign. And cataract surgery is, is a great thing. It's so simple to do, very rewarding. And you have an opportunity to almost, it's like plastic surgery, but, but you know, without the, the caveats to plastic surgery. It's, it's like you get to say, oh, I want to see clear in the distance, or oh, I want to see clear in the near. Or if you want glasses your whole life, you, you could get rid of it. So it's, I don't think it's a bad thing. So they are literally replacement lenses. Do you, do you operate on the eye, you take out the cloudy lens and you put a new one in? Yep, you suck it out. Uh, you use ultrasound to break it up. Uh, I'd love to show you a video, but I've learned you know, through the years nobody wants to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can find them okay. on YouTube if we want to see a, a sucking out of a cataract. <laughs> Yeah, you put a plastic lens in the eye that lasts forever. Really? And, uh, you have a you have a bag in the eye that holds that lens as well that supports that forever. The one caveat is that you know, as I approached my forties, I found I could not read my phone, and yeah. I found that at dinner parties with my colleagues and my friends, we're about the same age, and I, I'm very clever in choosing friends that are older than me, so I don't know what to expect. <laughs> and everyone does this, you know. Yeah. At the menu. Yeah. And um, it. you know, it's it's the focusing power. And so yesterday actually I was out with a couple of friends who are about a decade older than me and I said, Why on earth are you doing this, you amateur? Do this. I'm like, Oh, so much more. Oh, what, simple. what looking but down? Like no, just because I'm short sighted without my glasses, I I'm, I'm able Okay, to all right. So yeah, so Dawn <laughs> is taking off her glasses to look down. What do you think about laser eye surgery? I mean I've I've had laser eye correction and I thought it was fantastic. 
and I know that it's it's been around now for quite a long time. I mean, is it something that's that's considered safe and um, and recommended? I think laser eye surgery is amazing. Uh, it's what we're talking about here is losing your ability to focus. And remember, we talked about the cataract. So you put a lens in the eye, that plastic lens in that bag. But what that removes is the ability of your lens to focus. Right. And yes, there are multifocal lenses, etc. Yeah. But up to the age of about 40, 40 plus, those focusing muscles stiffen and you're just not able to move the lens anymore. And if you have surgery too early, you lose that too early. But post 45, 50, mm -hmm. you've lost a lot of that power already. Mm. And so surgery, cataract surgery would be okay. Laser eye surgery is very safe now. It's been done for many, many years yeah. now. But what it doesn't give you is that multi-stage focus. Yes. It makes you really clear for distance, but near is not as good. Yeah. Yeah. And so why do we become more long sighted? I mean, people often say, you know, there's nothing wrong with my vision. It's just that my arms aren't long enough. You know, I, I need to start holding things <sighs> further and further away. Well, what happens then as we age to the eyeball that means that our vision shifts? I mean, for those people who've been short sighted, perhaps for all their lives, they suddenly find that things are a bit better because they get more long sighted. Yes, well, you know, you have a little muscle in your eye that squeezes the lens. Okay. It goes like this. And when it like when it contracts as you bring something closer, you know, when you were when when you were a child, you could read something this close. Yeah, really and close. How many of us have sh yelled at our kids, going, well, "Not so close to your Yeah, eyes. not so close because it's right up here. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, now if I put something up here, I, can't, I can barely see it because the muscles in my eye are stiff. You can't squeeze your lens to bulge it up enough enough to right. focus the light. In. And you lose that the muscle becomes stiff and there's not very much you can do about that mm. i mean if it's a muscle can we exercise it i mean we know we can work out on muscles in our body can we do our eye exercises to help our sight i wish i wish it was like quads you know like do squats but, <laughs> yes. um <laughs> squats for the eyeballs I think, <laughs> I think you'll see a lot of um uh, fake news about eye exercises and i i really feel sad for the people who do them because they don't work. They don't work, okay. What, you got it from the expert here. Eye exercises, forget it. Just focus on your squats instead. <laughs> that's that's a shame. And I'm, 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 I'm looking know, I, at... I think what... Mm, go on, no, you go. But no, no, but, you know, what can work is uh, taking care of the general health. Yeah. That evidence has shown to... Um, delay the impact of press myopia, which is what we're talking about. So, What is press myopia? You know, Sorry, I, I missed that. Press, uh, P -R -E -S -B -Y -O -P -A. Mm. press myopia is just the inability as you get older to focus on near. It happens to everyone. Um, right. And a good diet, you know, uh, ensuring you rest your eyes, etc., etc. That, mm. that really is... Is the key and and looking at funny things on a computer or a group this is just it doesn't work no no i mean and of course we're all spending so much time even more than ever on screens a couple of questions um i'm seeing a lot of chat on instagram at the moment about floaters what are what are floaters and and what what, what are they doing are these the little fuzzy things that we see sometimes in our eyes floating about you should give them names you know? I Sorry, own. fuzzy things. <laughs> Not very technical. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. You know, I I, I never know an audience. Uh, I I can I can nerd it out as much as you like. We love a uh, bit of nerding. Of yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so I think it's important to know what floaters are. And if, you know, but they're be eyeballs. They're super cool. I love eyeballs. Eyeballs. Know. But we won't go into that. But, but within our eyeball, it's filled with a jelly and fluid, and we're born with that. And as a baby, that jelly is viscous and thick and very transparent. And again, you know, we are all made of protein. Mm -hmm. And those protein fibers are arranged in a parallel fashion, so they are clear and transparent. As you get older, that protein becomes more liquid, and it breaks down, and it precipitates. So you get these little fibrils floating around, and, and you yeah. see them. And when you look at a high contrast, so if you scuba dive or you, if you swim in the sea, 
and there's a white blue, you will see them because of the high contrast. If you look at a white wall, you will see them. If yes. you look at a clear blue sky, you will see them. If you fixate on them, you will see them more. But it's a very natural thing is for it? everyone to have. The brain is very adaptable in ignoring things because we have two eyes. So mm. one eye will say, oh, that's not there. And if you say to yourself, I'm looking past it, you won't see it you anymore. You won't see it. Fascinating. It, you can, it can drive you crazy. I have people crying in my, my, my clinics you know, with their flow. But it's about training yourself to say, you know, I can look past this. Look past them. Can we do anything to get rid of them physically? You, you can, but it's quite a big operation. In some places, they do laser them. But it's not something you can to do in the UK because yeah. the risks of causing problems are too high. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've set up an amazing company, which I'm so fascinated to talk to you about. It's with some colleagues, isn't it? Some, some other ophthalmic super brain experts, specifically for eye health. And you've got two things in particular that really struck me. One was eye vitamins. And as everybody here knows, I'm seriously into my vitamins. Only the ones that are evidence-based and work, by the way, not just a general random multivitamin. And when I looked at these, I thought there's some things here that I've never heard of, which is fascinating in terms of eye health. So the first one I have heard of, and that's lutein, L-U-T-E-I-N, Am I right in saying that that's some kind of carotenoid? Yep, 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 yep. You know, using carrots, carotenoid pigment, yep. And so what, 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 what does lutein do for our eyes and why would we specifically need it as a, as a vitamin? So those two things tend to not be normal multivitamins. I'm a big vitamin taker as well. A big, you know, pro vitamin D. Totally. You know, I live in... I live in London, I yeah. have to take vitamin D or yeah. I will be depressed, human being. Do you know, I was, sorry, just as an aside, I was reading, I was doing a bit of research in the car this morning, and I was reading some uh, research from a doctor who was saying that we all know about vitamin D, or at least we should do, certainly this community here hopefully does, but saying the importance of having magnesium with your vitamin D, because you need the magnesium to activate your vitamin D, or to help it What's work. What's more important? Yeah, That's so really a lot of people are magnesium deficient and they're busy, you know, taking their vitamin D, thinking that they're okay, but actually it's not able to be used properly because they haven't got enough magnesium, which I thought was fascinating. Exactly, and um, aside from that as well, it's moving laterally, is uh, vitamin K. So there's mm. a competitive inhibition. K is really important. If you take too high a dose, I so I take really high dose of vitamin D because, you know, I, I believe that it me, so what dose um, do you take? I'm going to put uh, you on the spot. How much are you taking? You tell me and I'll tell you. I can't remember. I have to go downstairs and grab the box, to be honest. <laughs> I have it on subscription. So it sends it to me. Do you a big in one. Autumn, yeah. And it sends it to me, you know, at, uh, it stops at spring. Uh, so I don't even have to think about it, but I can't yeah. remember. It's the high dose, okay. more expensive, good one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the the aside. Let's go back to carotenoids. Yes. No, that's, I'm really passionate about that. So lutein and zeaxanthin, they're really cool pigments. They're yellowy in color. We can't make them in our body. And you can eat them from uh, dark green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. So I was joking with somebody else. I was talking about uh, this. You know, I love kale, love spinach. You know, I have a very balanced diet. Yeah. But there's only that much kale I can eat. You know, sure. I would like to eat some fish. And, <laughs> Yeah. And the occasional piece of meat as well. Yeah. Um, and what it does is when you eat it, your body transports it to the center of your eye. Mm. And that's controversial what it actually does. There's a lot of postulates. There's uh, so many studies around the area. But it protects as an antioxidant, kind of a barrier to the active processes that happens at the back of the eye. So you're looking at me now. You know, how are you making that picture? What cells are firing off? What, you know, as it blasts off, what does it produce? You know, what those free radicals doing to the rest mm. of your eye? Much as the sun, as it damages your skin, what is my image and your computer image doing to your macula, which is the center bit of the eye that makes the picture? Um, and it's lutein and zeaxanthin that concentrates there. So having enough of it in your diet is really important. 
So zeaxanthin, so that's another carotenoid, is it? The lutein and, and the zeaxanthin. Because I also know a little bit about astraxanthin, which is a, a pink pigment, and that's, again, highly antioxidant. Mm -hmm. So these things are specifically helpful for the eyeball. And, and you talk about macula, the macular part of the eye, and I think macular degeneration is something that we hear a lot about. Are these supplements, the, the um, I need to get my name right now, the zeaxanthin and the lutein, are they specifically there to help prevent macular degeneration? They are, and they're one of the only uh, components to vitamins that have been in very expensive multinational clinical trials. And mm. I remember I was there for the announcement, again, nerd alert, it was, it was like I was in a Rolling Stones concert, you know, with all my mates going, oh my God, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? We need to talk about the trials. <laughs> and there was this tiny American Chinese lady that was in charge of this. It was, it was I think, tens if not hundreds of millions. I can't remember, wow. US dollars. It was, and it, it, it happened over five, six years over the country. And they found that these two pigments were protective for macular degeneration and mm. lots of money was spent because for so much of even my vitamin D stuff, the, the evidence is not great, you know, like you read the study, if it did it 50 patients, yeah. da, 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 you think, but it, there's a lot of personal choice in this, but for mm. these two pigments, I would say there is very good evidence. Really? It helps for aging, yes. So at, at what stage, older, sorry, I was just going to say, at what stage in life should we be thinking about these supplements then? I think it's it's if you have macular degeneration in your family, or if you live in an area with high UV light, mm -hmm. uh, then you should be thinking of them sooner. So we all take multivitamins for several different things. I can mm -hmm. think of you know three big ones for me. You know my health, not getting ill, not getting COVID. Mm -hmm. um, two, how my skin looks, which yeah. is I just not work so well. I need to watch more of your videos. <laughs> You look my great. Eyes, because my, my eyes are my job, you know, I, I need to see well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So would you say then, what, in our 30s, is this something? Or is this something that we should be giving our kids? Uh, it doesn't harm them. I, I would say if you take a multivitamin, if you want something as an added extra, eyes or something that you are passionate about, it's definitely for you. I think in your 30s, 40s, uh, it's really time to take stock. You know, I, I remember sure. my 20s in a haze. I don't think I took vitamins in my 20s. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, we were invincible, frankly, weren't we? I mean, nothing was going to get us when we were in our 20s. I miss those days. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> I think you're pretty invincible by the sounds of it. So those are the first two ingredients that I'm looking at here. We've also got vitamin C. So clearly we know yeah. that as another major antioxidant. Is there a specific link with eyes and vitamin C? It was part of the formulation that was in that trial again. I, I think the boring vitamins, which I will gloss over, which we had to include because they're important, you know, the CE, the Bs. Uh, yeah. And we know so much about them. And so we've all read so many articles about them, but they had to be included because they were important. Mm. You can talk about the minerals as well, so important. But, you know, zinc, copper, da-da-da. Yeah. Uh, be careful with zinc, though. As a, as a woman, as you get older, if mm. you take too much zinc, it can predispose you to urinary tract infections. Interesting. So just be cautious of that. Make sure you hydrate. Uh, yeah. That's that's one caveat. But zinc is important. Mm. Um, but I think the Mackie Berry thing is is for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm most excited about. Tell us about this. I mean, it's quite funny actually because I was literally, and this was not planned at all. But I'm sitting here in the middle of Kenya with these two extraordinary berries, and I've forgotten the name of them already. Is this a wine berry? I think this might even be an Asian one, I don't know. And then this um, Kenyan blueberry, which is a bit like a kind of squash blackberry with pimples on it, a blueberry with, with pimples on it. Um, hmm. But maki berry, I've never heard of. A maki berry is something that you've put in the eye vitamin. So, so what is it, and why is it so special? Why have I never heard of it? So, so to digress, from the Mackie Berry thing, uh, I like to talk about our team a little because it's made up of a, uh, you know, three other chaps, and we had a big fight over what to include. Um, and Mackie Berry won in the end; it was unanimous. Um, 
if you if you look up Mackie Berry, it's, it's a Chilean berry, uh, and uh, you know I, I heard you talk about purple pigment, pigments earlier. Mm. Why is it good to eat purple stuff? You know I I love aubergine mm. eggplant blah blah yeah, and curry. Mm. Mm. Why are blueberries good? Yeah. You know and aki aki. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it Akai? No, Akai. I don't know whether whether you say a, 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 a C, Akai, Aki, A C A I. I think it's Akai. I'm Akai. Gonna go with Akai. Okay, I'll go with that. Yeah. So Maki Berry is like, I would say Akai is the Prosecco, and Maki Berry is the Champagne. You know, it depends on on your poison, but it's uh, wow, it's, so very it's that high. level above. Yeah, and uh, and the small studies that have been done in Mackey Berry have been very beneficial for particularly dry eye and tear production. Uh, so it's not so much a pigment of the back of the eye, which we talked about with the lutein and zeaxanthin. This one's much more for the front of the eye. And there was a huge, uh, uh, you know, it's very hard to do these big studies with um, because there's so many confounding factors. So yeah. if you look at somebody, for example, if you're undergoing, if you have, Approaching menopause, and you have a hormonal imbalance, and if you, you know, everyone's genetically unique, mm. and if even if you take HRT, there's so many different HRTs with different yeah. components, and your hormone profile is not accounted for when mm. you test these things. So it's it's almost you, true a, a worthless exercise to test it. But even in healthy normal people. Mackie Berry was very promising, so I took it for a little while, and I don't know if it's psychosomatic, I felt I could see better. <laughs> Interesting, I've never heard of it, I mean, people yeah. are saying, so it's not maca, we know we know about maca root and maca powder, but this is actually spelt yeah. differently, this is M-A-Q-U-I, Mackie, Mackie Berry, so what does it look like, what does a Mackie Berry look like if we were to come across one in Chile? Like a very dark purple blueberry. I think. Mm. And apparently it's really yummy. But I've never eaten a real one. But You I need to go to Chile. <laughs> I was meant to go to Chile. I was invited. And then COVID happened. <sighs> well, you and me both. I'm fascinated to go on the, on the trail of the Mackie Berry. And then you've also got in here the important B vitamins, the B6 and the B12. So is the idea that you, you're taking this really alongside whatever else you might be taking? I mean, a lot of my followers here are probably already on HRT, they may well be taking adaptogenic herbs or ashwagandha or vitamin D or whatever, but is this designed to go alongside specifically to think about our eyes as we age? Yes, I think so. And I think, you know, there are so many multivitamins on the market. I, I would never just take a plain multivitamin because Same. I eat really well. Um, yeah. You know, I have a balanced diet. Although I'm now on the one meal a day thing because Are you? I, I'm I just don't I'm not hungry at dinner time so I, I prep the girls meals I have three daughters I make them the beige food that they love <laughs> and then they eat blueberries so it's fine <laughs> so you know chicken nuggets chips and beans it, a terrible I said you know you're not even Chinese uh, you should be eating rice and vegetables they're like no mama we want nuggets <laughs> and um <laughs> <laughs> Do you balance it out with a handful of blueberries? <laughs> <laughs> but I can't be bothered to make a meal for myself. And, you know, I actually eat my main meal at lunch. It's fairly balanced. And it's, <laughs> well, that, you're, you're intermittent fasting choices. then, aren't you, really? Which is, you know, considered to be a very like health, a, healthy way of doing it. I think so, but not on purpose. So if I'm doing surgery in the mornings, I, I, I drink like five cups of coffee in the morning. And that's my weakness. I can't help myself. I've got my coffee it here. Someone was asking me what I was drinking. It's Kenyan coffee. I, I force myself to eat something because I, I don't want to, you know, not be at my top form. So I, I will eat something, like mm -hmm. toast or a boiled egg or whatever that the kids have spat out. As <laughs> 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 Oh, you sound like a great mum. Now, th so you've launched, so MTHK, we do actually do have a Liz Loves discount, so thank you very much. With everything that we talk about here, we do try and bring you that little bit extra. Um, so if anybody wants to go and try it. So MTHK, uh, this is the Vitamins for Healthy Eyes, so check that out if you are interested. Um, and it has all the interesting information about the, the studies and the trials as well. But more than that, and something that I know we've had a lot of questions about, is dry eyes. 
particularly as we age, and we can talk about hormones and oestrogen and how that can also help with, with dry eyes. But you've got this amazing eye spray, which I would normally be concerned about spraying something around my eyes, but I'm not concerned because it's coming from you and your, your pals at Moorfields and UCL. Um, so okay, I, okay, okay. Before I, you start, before you start, yes. before you start, may I challenge you? Are you are you ready to to do a live spray? I am ready to do a live spray. <laughs> okay, before you do that, make sure you hold it, you know, just yay distance. This far. Close your uh, yeah. Close uh, my uh, eyes, so I'm not going to spread into an. You, okay. Is it going to make my mascara run? Well, make sure. Yeah, make sure it's it's uh, no. So, but but maybe it does, and I I I I'll I don't be care. like ashamed. But uh, what I need you to do is to prime it first. Okay. Prime it, point it away, spray, spray it at, at, at someone. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it's very, very oh, yeah. fine. Oh, okay. Very fine. So hold it, you know, kind of yay distance. Okay. And just close your eyes, though. Close your eyes. Close my eyes. And okay. then spray. Yeah, two sprays. One, two. Is that it? Blink. Blink, 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 blink. I think you're a bit far away. A bit far away. Um, but okay. it's, do you remember the Evian Mist thing? So yes, the Evian like Mist commercial. <laughs> we all used to spray our faces with Evian back in the day, in the 80s. Yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> I fell for that one too. <laughs> did nothing. <laughs> Made you feel good though. That yeah, refreshing, this, refreshing actually, yeah. This one's so, different. This one's okay, different. so what is this? What have I just sprayed around my eyes? <laughs> and I said, I do trust you. <laughs> <laughs> so dry eye is such a big thing you know I, yeah. I could I could talk for an hour about it but you know I, I'll be brief I think you can go to the website and look at you know all the blogs and stuff it's just called the eye spray but by the way for those of you who are asking it's the MTHK Rachel I know you've popped a link on Instagram what's your website just for people who want to go and have a look quite quickly I think it's MTH. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm not the. I've I've I've, I've got it here. For these I think I'll have it. Just for those who want MTH to. MTH day. MTHK dot com and MTHK stands for making technology humankind. Love because it. really we we come from you know humankind you know play on words the kind of thing but making technology humankind I know it doesn't say anything about eyes but really technology is the mainstay of our lives. Uh, I'm yeah. really talking on. On my phone. Yeah, it's yeah, I'm, the yeah, same. Other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, and um, just just the way we work these days, and how how we rest, and how we focus, and how we're tired, and how the eyes dry out if you're burning. Mm. The spray is great because if you put drops in, you know, it, it will smudge your mascara. It's hard to get in. You forget. Uh, I, I love to spray. I spray my kids with it. Actually. You spray <laughs> like, your oh, kids with it. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I mean, how, how often can you use this? Oh, as, as much as you want. Um, I would say several times a day when you take breaks from your computer. Everyone should be taking breaks from their computer. Yeah. You need to have a standing desk. You know, I don't have a standing desk, but my, I'm, I'm moving in a month. My next desk is standing. I have um, one in London. Sit at the edge of your chair. Stand up, move around. Yeah, you reminded um, me. Yeah, I need to be doing but, that. But, you know, the other thing is... Look, yeah, look in the distance, whatever distance right. you have in London. Hopefully yeah. you do have some. And and look at things that are green and moisturize your eyes. It's, a, yeah. it's we blink less in the city than people who live, you know, in happy countryside or um, really? are, are, are just generally have a better men mental well-being. So if you're stressed or if you live in the city or if you work on... Uh, wide screens and I have like many screens around me now sure. you just blink less if you're a highly strong individual you, you also blink less so I, I never blink um, and, uh, it, it's and we need things. to blink we need to blink I'm consciously yeah. kind of aware of blinking more people are asking what is this spray doing what are the magic ingredients in here so you know water is water but tears are not water. I think there's a, a real misunderstanding of what forms the lubrication in our eyes. And not forgetting eyelids, you know? Eyelids. The, the beautiful yeah. things that we put mascara on, they're like the windscreen 
uh, windscreen wiper of yeah. the car. So it spreads the water <laughs> around the eyes. But right. it's not just water. So tears, tears are, I love tears. So tears are three things. You have a layer of mucus that holds the water. And then you have a la- layer of fat that prevents evaporation. And any disruption of that balance uh, really just messes everything up. Mm. So the spray has liposomes, which is like a, a good fat. Is it? That actually wow. is quite good for moisturizing around the eyes as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's in your eye cream. Nice. Yeah, Besides yeah. Liposome is great for your eyes. Yeah, under eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Besides hyaluronic acid, I love to talk about hyaluronic Again, I can talk about hyaluronic acid for an hour. Excellent. And Come back and talk and about that. I love hyaluronic acid. <laughs> That's a I knew the guy whose family first um, created hyaluronic acid for the cosmetic industry. Really? He was my patient. Because it comes from rooster crowns. Yes, and it's so, extraordinary, yeah, isn't it? Although okay, I think they, they, I think they can synthesize it now, can't they, from a plant source? They do, but but for many many years they were breeding roosters for their crowns and making them bigger and bigger. And mm. I asked him, I, I said, "How do your roosters not kill each other?" Because I have I have chickens in, in my backyard. In yeah. My my neighbors love me, and um, <laughs> he says we put them three in a cage and they don't kill each other. If you put two in a cage one will be dead by the morning. But three together. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know that. Any chicken breeders out there with their roosters? <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to have chickens Sorry. when I when I had my farm. But, but, but we, we didn't we, have we roosters. Go back to liposomes. I'm terrible at digressing. So this, this has also got vitamin oh, yeah. A and vitamin E and pro-vitamin B5, B6, you know, B5, um, in this liposomal mix with some purified water. So it's quite simple, but quite powerful then for just moisturizing the eyes. If you've got dry eyes and maybe you're thinking about using eye drops, is that a good thing or not? Definitely, especially if you wear contact lenses and things like that, you know, because it goes well with it. Mm-hmm. If you wear eye makeup, you know, if you work in the office and you just want something quick, you can go and yeah, it yeah. moisturizes around the eye as well. You know, I'd be putting eye drops and you're worrying about your mascara. Um, That's smudging. great. I can just spray it over the top. It hasn't smudged my makeup at all. Nothing's happened. No, and, except my eyes are refreshed. You bl- when you blink, it goes in the eye. It draws it in by uh, capillary it? effect. So it pulls it in. People think you have to drop it in the eye. But it just needs to be near the lids and it pulls it in. Pulls so it a spray in. is amazing. That's really, really clever. Now, what's your view on estrogen in terms of eye health? Because I know many women who've had issues with dry eyes, and it's really helped with having replacement estrogen. It's a, it's a very controversial space, HRT and, and any type of HRT and dry eyes in, you know, that, in that isolation. Mm. I think what people forget to talk about is androgens. Mm. So androgens really is a really um, sophisticated way of saying testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to say that. And mm. nobody wants to say, oh, why does Granny have a beard? Um, <laughs> but it's the balance of estrogen and and- androgens that make a difference. Androgens are known to be anti-inflammatory. And surprisingly and ironically and illogically, estrogens are pro-inflammatory. So nobody knows why when you have menopause and you have low estrogen that your eyes become drier. And the theory out there that's mostly accepted is the balance of the hormones because when you lose your estrogen, you also lose the androgen bit of things. Yeah, you do. And it's yeah. the balance of all, all, all the hormones that, that make a difference. And again, and I come back to that individuality thing, I think it's very well accepted that menopause does cause um, funny things you know within all mucosal surfaces of the human body and the eye is one of them so lubricating the eye at this time taking good vitamins having good diet keeping well exercising you know yeah is is will affect the eye so you can do everything to help so if eyes are a big thing for you then taking a multivitamin and using sprays is is a a no-brainer Brilliant. 
absolutely brilliant. And should we all presumably be protecting our eyes in the summer? Hopefully it's going to start getting a little bit sunnier. You know, are sunglasses an absolute must? Is there a particular type that we should look out for if we're buying sunglasses? It has to have UV uh, protection, especially in near the equator mm -hmm. and in some summer months uh, in the UK. You don't have to be the sunglasses lady, you know, you don't have to wear it indoors. You don't have to wear it when Good. it's cloudy. You know, don't be silly. Um, the screen doesn't pro pro produce enough UV to um, harm the eye. Right. So I think just in bright sunshine. So you don't have to wear, you know, weird tinted glasses in the house. It, it, if, if, it, if you find glare from the screen is affecting you and it relaxes and, it, you know, it protects the eye strain side of things, yes. But in terms of macular health, and back of the eye health, it's just when you're outdoors. Fantastic. I, I could talk to you all day and my audience is absolutely loving everything that you have to say. I do hope that we can connect and chat some more again. I'd love to talk some more about hyaluronic acid and more about this berry. I am definitely going to go and be looking up the Maki, M-A-Q-U-I, Maki berry from Chile. Let me know when you go on your research trip if you need a bag carrier. Um, and also the lutein and the zeaxanthin. Fascinating for eye health. This is something I think that this, we all you know, need. You're awesome. I've watched a couple of your videos you know, prior to speaking to you, and um, I just find you so interesting. I challenge you, take the vitamin every day for a couple of weeks. Okay. Try your reading without glasses, and then try it after, and see. You know, But uh, sometimes you know, I think maybe it's just me. You know, We tried our best, and I felt better, but you know, try it, and uh, see I how will. you go. You know? I will. Yeah. I absolutely will. I've got two packs here. Um, that my daughter actually brought out in her suitcase because I knew that we'd be talking. Um, and I have two little bottles of the spray, which I'm loving because actually, I mean, I am on the equator here, literally right on the equator. My house, I mean, my garden is literally where the equator runs through. Um, and it's very dry and very dusty. And I really feel that my eyes suffer. And I do a lot of screen work. I mean, everything I'm reading, writing, talking to screens, you know. Instagram scrolling, all of that. So this is this is made for me and so many of us, midlife women particularly. So thank you and thank you very much for the discount. We really appreciate that. So that's mthk.com. Remind us again what MTHK stands for. Um, it's making technology humankind. Making um, technology. And the founders humankind. are Two ophthalmologists, uh, you you should meet Alex Ionides. He is the quintessential English London gent. Hilarious. Sounds great. Uh, and a, a Swiss Swiss professor um, who's a scientist. And of course, Ama, uh, who is an entrepreneur, but, but just such a visionary. So what Amazing. a great team. Amazing yeah. team. Thank you. And what we love doing here is finding new things that are interesting, helpful, but above all evidence-based and fully backed by the research and the scientists. You know, we're not into fads, we're not into trends, phases, stuff that doesn't work, stuff that's rubbish. Um, so thank you very much and thank you for taking time out today. I'd probably better let go back to your, either your, the chicken nuggets for the kids or probably some more important cataract surgery, which is far more life-changing. <laughs> No, I'm going to think a little bit more about chickens and talk to you about roosters and hyaluronic acids soon, yeah. hopefully. I shall so look forward to that. <laughs> Dawn, it's been an absolute dream. Thank you. Pleasure. Take Big care. hearts to you. Thank you. <laughs> She's done that. <laughs> You're going to have to click off me because if I click off you, I lose everybody. I will. See you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. So fascinating. I mean, I have to say, I love my job. How cool is that? How cool is she? And the amazing scientists that work behind the scenes that come from UCL and Moorfields and beyond. Brilliant. You know, we just take our eyes for granted, don't we? You know, the most I ever think about is, oh, where did I put my glasses? Because I can't, you know, see this. And actually protecting, and I thought that was really interesting that you need to do something about it, particularly in terms of diabetes, before it's too late because you can't fix it. 
So that was yet another reason to ditch the sugar. I know I go on about it all the time. Yawn. There she goes. Low carb, cut the sugars. Another reason from Professor Sim as to why that should be the case. So the website, I'm just being asked here, mth, yeah, mthk.com. Okay, Liz Loves gets you 10% if you want to try. I'm going to try it, okay? She's challenged me. I'm going to do this. Two of these a day. Got my spray. I shall report back in a couple of weeks' time and see if my reading and eye strain is better and my eyes feel healthier. Now, Dawn was talking a little bit about mascara. I did have a mascara here. Lainey, I think you're lurking in the background somewhere. Could you just pop into my makeup bag that's there? Because I just want to talk about the mascara. Because those of you who've got the new copy of the Lizelle Wellbeing magazine, which I do not have yet, but it is something that I'm looking forward to, will see when you get it that there's a fantastic two-page, and by magic, thank you, I have my <laughs> mascara. Thank you, darling. Um, I, uh, it's been written by our lovely uh, senior beauty writer, Ellie Smith. And, you know, if you thought that all mascaras were the same, you need to read this feature because it's completely fascinating. The mascara world is a jungle out there. There are lots and lots of different types. There are lots of different ways that they work. And there are lots of different reasons why you might want a mascara, whether you want it to be long lasting, whether you want it to be volumizing to make your lashes look thicker, whether you want it to be lengthening. I mean, just amazing. So this is my favorite current one, which I've got out here with me in my makeup bag. And I will have to do that to actually read the little teeny letters on it. And it's the Delilah one. And it's called Day to Night um, Buildable Volumizing Mascara. So this is a, a volumizing one. So if you read that article, if you're interested in having a good volumizing mascara to make your lashes look longer and thicker, then this is the one. And I really love it. It's just a great basic mascara that you can put on. And what I like about it is because it's buildable, you can actually use it throughout the day. So say you use your mascara in the morning, and then you're going out in the evening and you just want to vavum, you know, your lashes, you can actually build on top of it and that's the way it's designed to work, that you can build once it's dried, you can actually go and reapply and get more and get more wow factor. So I just wanted to share that with you because we were talking about eyes today. Um, and that is from Delilah and we do have 20% off everything, all the single items at Delilah. As we do, of course, with Studio 10. And many of you have said how glowy I look here. Um, and that's thanks to the Glowplexion, the Studio 10, that the lovely Grace got me into day before yesterday. If you saw that tutorial, I was really glowing then because I was in a big, thick jumper. I was at her home um, up near Mount Kenya. And it was, it was cold when I started off because I'd shut all the doors and windows to keep the sound out. I was boiling hot by the end of it. So it wasn't a tropical hot flush. Um, but I was looking perhaps a little bit more glowing than usual. But yeah, really easy. So Catherine's asking if it's easy to take off. Yeah, it literally just comes off with cleanser. It's, it's really, really good to hear, uh, to see rather. Um, and yeah, so if you are interested in mascaras, do head to that feature when your magazine arrives. Um, another couple of questions coming in here. What am I wearing? So this is a dress from Borken. So Borken is a really fantastic British sustainable fashion brand. I love their things. I wear them a lot. This I particularly like if I stand up. I mean, it's a kind of animal print, so I thought it would be quite Kenya-ish. But it has the all-important pockets, which we love. Really nice little um, frill at the bottom, if you can see that. Elasticated waist. How much do we love an elasticated waist? Definitely a must-have. I like the V-neck because I just always like the shape. I always think that's quite a flattering shape. And I like the sleeves that are, have also got elastic cuffs, so you can wear them low if you want to. But I always tend to roll my sleeves up. I don't know whether that's because I just like to get stuck into work. But I always just kind of, I don't like things around my wrist so much. I prefer to have just a little bit of um, a gap. So anyway, so this is a Borken dress. And I'm pretty sure that we have a Liz Loves. Yeah, 15%. Their code is very slightly different if you head to Borken. It's Borken... Um, which is B-A-U-K-J-E-N, Borken. And the code to get your 15% off on their website is Liz Loves 15 Okay, so all in capitals again, Liz Loves and then 1-5. That gets you um, your discount on that. Uh, also, yeah, this is my Neroli. So I've got my little Neroli necklace on. And I think at the moment, 
Yeah, the whole range of the Lizell jewellery, the botanical collection, of which this is my kind of star stellar piece, um, is 20% off. So, and for that, the code is SPRING20. Yeah, SPRING20 gets you 20% off everything on um, the botanical range. So if you've been looking at other things, I know we've had various offers on things like the lovely mangrove ear studs, the little hearts for Valentine's Day and other things. But if you're fancying something in the range, um, then it is 20% off everything. So I was just distracted there because we've got an amazing colobus monkey. I'll see if I can take a picture of him actually and put it on my Instagram. If you've never seen a colobus monkey, they are phenomenal. They are black with white furry backs and ends for the tail and like a white fluffy face. And they kind of look really grumpy and cross and they love swinging about in treetops. So they, they tend to live in areas in Kenya where there's lots of high trees because they need that cover to protect them from leopards and things on the ground. So they, they literally, they swing from, from the trees. So you get them in areas like this where you've got densely populated uh, yellow fever trees or acacia trees. That's where they like to hang out. So yeah, that just distracted me for a moment, that monkey, but I'll see if I can take a picture of him um, in just a moment. So that is just about it for today. Thank you for being with me. It's been a real pleasure to be here actually somewhere a little bit different. I'm going to do some behind the scenes before I go. I've got to head back to Nairobi shortly um, because I've got a meeting with somebody about menopause this evening. So we're going to be doing some work, hopefully, to bring menopause education and awareness to Kenya. So um, I'm heading back for that. Uh, but before I go, I will do a few behind the scenes. Oh my goodness, there's a couple of guinea fowl that have just wandered onto the veranda as well. They're kind of semi-tame. Um, this is an alert actually for anybody that doesn't like birds. And I'm thinking of one particular friend, Sarah, if you're watching this. I've got some amazing footage of incredible birds here in Naivasha. And I am going to put it on my Instagram stories, okay? So if you're somebody that has a bird phobia, look away, just scroll past the birds because there are some extraordinary birds, including some tame guinea fowl that come into the house and they're really cute anyway. So I should be taking pictures of all those and sharing them with you later. Thank you very much. That is it for today. Don't forget tomorrow, Friday is the day of the Friday Five podcast. It's a really good one, of course, uh, so I'm excited to share that with you and talk about the immune system and lots of great things that we can do. Also, the newsletter will be winging its way into your inbox if you're a subscriber. That's a free thing that just comes um, from Lizard Wellbeing, usually around tea time, UK time. So if you'd like that, make sure that you're on the list to subscribe and then we'll make sure that your name is added to get it tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thanks for all your hearts and your comments. Lovely to be with you and I'll see you back again. I'm live with you on Tuesday. Tuesday, interestingly, I'm going to be joined by one of our favourite people. Yes, he's back, Rupert, Rupert Kingston from Delilah, who should be thrilled, actually, that I've just mentioned his mascara. <laughs> so he's going to be back with a makeup tutorial for spring. So that'll be fun, won't it? Something to lift our spirits a bit. Anyway, I hope that everybody is safe and well. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.